Welcome back again to the uh, Elephant Room. We're fired up to be here, and we got another big discussion on the table, and we got two people who can bring it big time right here. So um, um, I'm a little scared, but uh, we're going to do this right now. We're going to talk about culture in the church. Now, y'all are both more uh, culture guys than me, so I feel like um, uh, maybe you're both on the left of how I see this, but I want to listen and I want to learn. And uh, so let's allow for the caricature at the beginning because we're caricatured all the time. You're, you're caricatured all the time, Mark. Really? Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sure you're not even aware of that. So, um, so uh, Driscoll um, is going to speak in a minute, but first I want to hear uh, from you, uh, Perry, and I want you just to talk about, your, I want you to talk about culture and its importance and uh, how it helps you be, I mean, you've got a boom and growing church, tons of people coming to Christ, uh, lots of what people would consider pretty relevant, connected stuff going on. Um, just give us your philosophy on that, why it's important and what you're doing. Yeah, I did a, um, I did a series of messages back in, in 2008 um, on, on questions that people were asking. I ripped it off of you, by the way. You're welcome. Um, yeah, it was awesome. And, uh, and I, the illustration I used was my wife and I were going to a gym one day. We, we were on vacation. We were going to a gym. So we're, we went to this gym, and we, you know, it was like, okay, we're going to go in there and work out. And um, we just got to find a parking place. Right. And there wasn't a parking place. Literally, we drove around this gym three times. And I guess it was God telling us we don't need to work out. We're on vacation. So we went back home. <laughs> Clearly. But, but the, the point was um, I wanted to go there, but there wasn't, a, there wasn't a parking place. And the more I thought about that, I thought about, man, that, that's, the, that's a lot of churches. Not all churches, but that's the church. Is I, I don't think... I don't think the world is as anti-church or America is as anti-church as some people say they are. I just think people are walking in and the church is answering questions that nobody's asking. Um, at the end of the day, nobody cares about the trichotomy and dichotomy of the spirit. Um, like That's not a question burning on the laity's heart. Um, they they want to know, um, my mother just died or my daughter just died. Does Does the Bible say anything about that? Yeah. And so that, that when I talk about engaging culture, I'm talking about engaging them where they are and bringing them to the word. I, th I think that's what Jesus, I think that's what Jesus did. Jesus, um, you don't see him uh, showing up and, and saying, open up your, I mean, he did open up the scroll, but not every time. I mean, he's engaging culture. He's going to the parties. He's hanging out with people. He's talking to, pe to people about where they are in their life. And then it, he, yeah, he always brings it back to him because that's who he is. Um, but I, I think that's what we do in, in the Bible. We, we engage people where, where they are, but then we bring them to the Word of God. All right, talk about the culture, some of the things you're doing culturally to connect with that. Well, we started out Easter a couple years ago with Highway to Hell by ACDC. Um, and it, the Reform it, guys love that, by the way. They did, man. <laughs> it was a big deal. A lot yeah. of them are still really well, grateful. I was, yeah. they, just, they just need to understand I was predestined to do it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, God... Before the foundations of the earth, God <laughs> obviously wanted that to happen. Um, those guys, so freak, those guys freak oh out, and God. God obviously wanted it to happen. So, uh, God, well, that's, man. So everything that's everything that happens, God wanted yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I, I uh, but we started out with that song. Um, but it was a message on the subject of hell, and you know, and how Jesus died, and one of the reasons, one of the reasons he died on the cross was to deliver us from hell. But well, we started with Highway to Hell by ACDC, and it was really tense. It was even tense for me, but um, we had a guy. Why, come Why was it tense? Well, because I, 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 you know, I did grow up going to church on Easter, and I never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The cantata, 
the senior adult choir never busted out, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm on a high. So anyway, I, I, but we, we had a guy come up to us and uh, several months later, and he had received Christ, and he said, God, he said, in that song is where he felt God speak to him and tell him that's the highway you're on. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, people have asked, does the end justify the means? Well, I don't know. Ask that guy in heaven. I think he's probably going to say yes. Um, and so we've, 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 we're willing to do things like that. We're willing to take a step out there and engage culture. But the purpose is always to bring them back here. Well, we're going to engage on whether that's a good idea or not in a minute, but I think you've fairly expressed what you've done, and let's, let's hear some of your thoughts on this, uh, engaging the culture. Uh, here's the thing, guys. Where's the line? How far is too far? I think that's what I want to have the conversation about, things that you guys are doing to culturally engage. Is that too far? Because, frankly, I, um, I don't want to give commentary on it now, but I want to hear that discussion. I want to talk about that elephant in the room because I'm telling you there's a lot of people think that that is way too far. So let's have that conversation. And where are you at on the culture? Yeah, I'll go big missiology. I've been talking this stuff since the mid-90s. But uh, every people live in a culture the way you do. Language, holidays, tradition, view authority, communication, mode of dress, transportation, education. I mean, every people live culturally contextualized. So you look at Jesus, he is in a culture in heaven. He intentionally as a missionary leaves that culture to come cross-culturally to the earth. He says roughly 40 plus times in John's gospel, the father has sent me, the father sent me. So he's sent from one culture to another. He's incarnated, he's contextualized. Uh, He says in John 20, 21, as the father sent me, so I send you. So to be a Christian is to be a sent one, is to be a missionary, is to be into culture. And then you look in the Gospels, the various views of culture, there's the Pharisees who are more like the modern day fundamentalists and sectarians where they try to have a subculture that is more of a sanctified culture and avoid lost people. Jesus says they're hypocrites and that they're handing out divorces like some people hand out Halloween candy. And so even the most religious tend to be hypocritical. There's the Sadducees who don't avoid culture, but they embrace it. They become liberals is what they become. There's the Essenes, which are sort of the modern day equivalent of the Pentecostal and Charismatics. They avoid culture for personal, unmediated, spiritual experience with God, or at least as they understand them. And then there's the apostles who are culturally connected and engaged. And and I I would go to Paul. I always go to Paul. And when he says in 1 Corinthians 9, well, I'll start. He says, first of all, you got to get Jude 3. There's, There's contend and contextualize. And this is what we're always hammering, you know, contend for the faith that was once for all delivered unto the saints. So it's that closed handed contending, fighting. Here's the truth. Here's what we believe in. Here's what we're doing. Don't let me interrupt you. And then, um, and then there's the contextualize, which is the first Corinthians nine. I became all things to all men so that by all means I might save as many as possible. And I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessings. And in that, this issue of culture is where do you contextualize? Where do you contend? Where are you flexible with your methods? Where are you absolutely inflexible with your convictions? And that's really the discernment of ministry. And so I use the language too, when it comes to culture, there's three things we can reject, receive, redeem. Reject is we won't have anything to do with that. There's there's nothing godly there. Uh, Receive it is, you know what? We can use that. It's part of general revelation, common grace. And then there is redeem. This is a good thing that's gone a bad direction. Is there a way for us to utilize? So to use the song as a case study of uh, a Perry service. We had several people something... write in and ask us about this highway to hell thing. So yeah, that's a good case study. Should they reject it? Yeah. Should they receive it? Or should they redeem it? And this is true of, I mean, the Puritans hated Christmas and they rejected it because it was worldly. I mean, every holiday is pagan at its core. Every Technology probably was invented by an unbeliever. The revivalists hated hymns. They were a bunch of bar tunes. Bar tunes, yeah. And they stole the organ from the bar. And so all of these issues, it's do we contend here? Do we contextualize here? Could we receive this? Do we reject this? Do we redeem this? And what happens is sort of the the lowest IQ on the internet just says, it's worldly. Um, (laughs) And so is the internet, you know? I mean, yeah, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I, that's, that, that was very helpful. Let's hear some of your thoughts on that. Um, re, um, receive, 
Uh, reject, what, redeem. Re receive, reject, you redeem. You like that? You're going to take it, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's very helpful, actually, because it gives you a, it gives you a little bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Receive, Three. reject, redeem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to receive that part of culture into my philosophy of ministry. I'm going to reject that as not suitable or appropriate for ministry, and I'm going to. How is receive and redeem different? Receive is just, it's okay as is. Redeem is, there's a way to do this okay. that honors the gospel. Receive it then, no, no, no problem. Uh, redeem it, we're going to have to work with it a bit, but we can use it. Reject it, that doesn't belong here. Right. Speak to some of that and choices that y'all are making, and how do you feel about that, Perry? I mean, I, feel, I mean like I said, I, I love the fact that we use Highway to Hell. I mean, we're, we're we, I love that we have did a song. Who sings the song uh, Bleeding Love? Who sings that song? Is I it, don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Uh, but we we did the song we did the song one time it's it's a uh, secular I even hate that Jesus didn't die to make songs Christian but I, I I we used that song but put it to the clips of the Passion of the Christ well now when somebody's driving down the road that attended one of our worship services and they hear the song Bleeding Love I've had people tell me that's where my mind goes every time my mind goes back to Jesus dying on so the that'd cross that'd be an example of redeeming, redeeming. a song yeah. Yeah. redeeming yeah. When, when I hear when I hear um, but even using the Passion is redeeming like. None of us are going to put Mel Gibson on our team, right? right? Like he, he actually, I think, is on Charlie Sheen's yeah, team now. Yeah. He's this close to being a deacon, right? You know? I yeah. mean, you know. yeah. right? So, so um, the point is, is that in taking the movie, um, the Passion of the Christ, not very hard from culture, not very hard to uh, redeem that. But with the song, the example you're giving is, uh, um, I want to go to this highway to hell thing. All right. Because I'm, I'm like so out on the fact that you did that, like out on that. I can't believe you did that. So awesome. Put me in that category. So I'm fired up about you, uh -huh. and I'm fired up about the passion that you have for the Lord and for the gospel and for God's word. Uh -huh. But so I'll just be the guy. I just, I just don't get it at all. And here's, here's what I don't get. Well, let, let me ask you this. Yeah. I mean, okay. So when God tells Isaiah to strip naked in Isaiah 20, you would have probably gone, "Hey, Isaiah, I don't, I don't get this." Well, I think first of all, anytime you try to make something that happen in Scripture normative, okay? So no, I'm just like, saying it happens. It's in the Bible. We should have at least no, once I'm, a no, year. No. We should have someone strip naked. No, no, but it's <laughs> no. But there's there's instances. Second emotion. Yeah. <laughs> Second emotion. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's instances. What do you do in Acts chapter 17 when Paul quotes two secular quote rock songs yeah. when he's reaching the Athenians? There what do you do in Matthew chapter two when God uses astrology? Yeah. to reach the wise men. I mean, how can we say that those methods were not effective? It's not one, one prophet stripping down naked. It's all through the scriptures where God meets people where they are and brings them to where he is. Right. That's why right. we do what we do. Yeah, I think that God meeting somebody where they are isn't quite the same as taking something that is blatantly offensive to the gospel and the cross and bringing it into the center of the church and believing that that's advancing the cause. Like at some point, we've got to give a little credit to God's spirit and to God's word and not be quite so dependent on our ability to sort of bridge this but little... What, this if little God's, what if God's spirit and God's word led us to actually do the illustration in the first place? Well, I, it would need to be God's word because I think God's spirit led me is a little subjective, right? I mean, we got people, we got people on death row that God led them to kill their family. So that's true. That's you know, true. So I think it would have to be God's word that said it, not some subjective sense of what God's spirit's leading me to do because I had too much pizza. But or does God's word directly contradict what we did? Well, and I and I think this comes down to this comes down to an important issue, and that's do we only can we only do what the Bible commands, or can we do whatever we want? except what the Bible forbids? That's a big theological well, the, question. Yeah, and I think you said them backwards. I think that we, the first question is, is can we do anything that the Bible forbids? The answer is clearly no. no. Mm -hmm. I think we'd all be there. And it's good for us to hear. So if you and I have a point of difference, it's because we see what the Bible it's a, forbids it's a differently. Issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? But Absolutely. see, the problem that people make, and I don't want to run to your defense here because I want to hammer you some more. But, <laughs> but, but, I want, but I want to acknowledge that the mistake is, and this is partly why I want to have these discussions today, because the mistake is to say, because Perry does different than what I believe the Bible says, he doesn't agree that the Bible should be the authority, and that's wrong. What's right is he may see differently than I do what the Bible forbids. And I just, I just really struggle with people who try to get up on this high horse of, oh, well, Perry did that, I wouldn't do that, he must not believe the Bible like I do. That's the problem. Well, the, the, the other problem, though, James, is people lose their freaking mind because we did highway to hell 
they don't watch the rest of the service. And, and when, when you isolate, we did highway to hell, well, yeah, that, that, I mean, I could see where that could be problematic in somebody's mind. But if you watch the rest of the service, it was not the end point. It was the place where we jumped off to lead people to a place where ultimately I preached the gospel and people received Christ. Okay, so, so, and you can speak to this too, but you got going on, you got all these people that are criticizing, me included, but for some different reasons, that we'll get to this highway to hell thing in the beginning of the service. Y'all are going to love this Easter, by the way. Yeah, it yeah. is going to be, a, we're doing running with I don't the think, devil. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm... <laughs> so, so... Yeah, yeah. I, one, I, one, I, one egregious offense at a time, please. I feel like I just had an insult. I think I know why the Baptists don't invite you to the convention. They never I, do, man. They never do. They never no. do. But, but here, here's, here's what I want. Here's what I want. Here's what I want to get to on that point is, is that the fact of the matter is, is that half the people that are sideways about the fact that you uh, did the Highway to Hell song at the beginning, they also wouldn't have a service where they talk about hell. And you challenge that you don't want to go to hell and you preach the gospel as uh, God's provision for people headed toward hell. Right. And I think that the truth of the matter is there's a whole lot of people maybe that wouldn't do that but wouldn't go as far you did the other way and really challenge well, people and, that's, that's and bring the, the message about the reality of hell. But see what happens is guys get hammered for going too far. Nobody ever gets hammered for not going far enough. I want to hammer them. So it's like, hey, you know, you, you, did, you did highway to hell. Maybe that's too far. But Johnny Coward... You know, who has He's up there with trembling knees. He can't even mention hell, and someone's like, is it real? And he's like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It upsets up. people. Like, I don't know. Yeah, nobody's been <laughs> saved since, you know, the first Bush was in office. Right. And it's okay because he didn't do highway to hell, but right. he's, he's got a highway to hell in his church. Well, what I think about... <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean... What I... Yeah. What I think about Perry is, is I think that, you know, Proverbs says where there are uh, no ox and the stalls are clean. Yeah, shovel And the so and the point is, is that he's out trying to do some things. I wouldn't do some of the things he's done for sure. I would not. But you got to give some credit to people that are out there thinking about how he's can I. He's doing something. Thank you. Thank Let's you. Let's at least put a gold star on the chore chart. He's doing something. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right? Right. I mean, how many guys are doing nothing? Nothing and reveling in it. Yeah, I We didn't. never do nothing wrong here. Never. <laughs> you didn't have to say the wrong part. You could have just kept with the nothing. <laughs> and, and I don't think people see that. And I don't think that dead orthodoxy is uh, a great substitute for the fervent pursuit of lost people. Yeah. But I think that in this discussion, we're just trying to say, and I'm going to try to say to you, how far is too far? I've got some summary thoughts about that that we can go to in a moment. But um, how about some input back here from, uh, look at you up there, Furtick. <laughs> how about some thoughts? <laughs> how about some thoughts back here on the subject? Who wants to go first? Just call it. All right, Matt, you're on. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd start by saying I'm a bit bitter that you, you put those two guys up together that, that really line up fairly well, and then you pit Furtick and I against each other like we hate each other. So I, I can't even, I can't get, I've got to work through bitterness in my heart right now before I can even address that. So. All right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Steve. All right, all right. Platt, you got something for me? Yeah, we're not, we're not going to do Iowa to Hell. Um, Why? Why, though? Because... The band can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> hush now, hush now. We sold all our instruments. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. No, all the money went uh, overseas. No. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're coming to that. We're coming to that. Don't get ahead of me. Come on, Platt. Uh, I think you and I are the same in this. Yeah. Not at your church. I, I think Why? the best way to reach lost people is to exalt the glory of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the wrath of God. For 2,000 years, he has been seeking people with this gospel, and he is sufficient to do it. The more we put his character on display, and I'm not saying Perry's not putting his character on display, but the more we put his character on display and dumb down anything that would pull away from people seeing his character, I think the, the more wise we are to trust him by his spirit to, to do the work of evangelism right. in the church. Good. So, Great. But I'm not saying that yeah. no, I get Perry it. doesn't want to exalt the glory of God. Yeah, but it's you're just saying that he didn't do it when he did Highway to Hell. I'm just <laughs> saying, I, don't, I don't think that song brings particular glory. Yes or no. <laughs> it, wait, wait. Because I, I'm, I'm, yes or no, it was a mistake. Uh, well, I wouldn't do it, clearly. Right. I yeah. wouldn't either. Greg? Okay. Well, 
I, you know, I've been to, I've visited churches where they play what we would call secular music up front, though maybe sort of semi quasi Christian, i.e., you know, a Dylan song from his Christian period or U2 songs. It's Christian and, period. And my, that, my yeah. thought on it was, it's you like know, puberty. my thought was, <laughs> <laughs> what? I missed it. He said Dylan's Christian period was like puberty. <laughs> and so, you know, when I hear that, I mean, I was, you know, I wasn't raised in the church. I was raised listening to rock and roll, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, all this. So when I came to faith, I made a clean break with it. Then I had to kind of come back and revisit it again and say, okay, as I'm speaking to my culture today, can I use these things as bridges? My thought was, and I'm not addressing your thing so much, Perry, but when I saw Christians doing secular songs, I just thought it was lame. I thought the bands weren't as good, they didn't do it as well, and I'd rather just listen to you too. I kind of de- agree with David in that I think when we play to our strengths, and our strengths are worship, done right, when it glorifies God, I think it kind of blows a non-believer away. And they kind of like, what meaneth this? Kind of Book of Acts style? Right. Like, what's going on here? However, when you look at Paul and Mars Hill, he did quote their own people to build a bridge. And I think there's a place for bridge building. So I think we have to each decide how that's going to be done in our culture. Yeah. All right. Uh, verdict? I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great. Perry did Highway to Hell. Uh, he does the worship thing, too. Um, as great as anybody. And I would also say, you know, within that, to say that there's a a, a line that it's okay to engage culture by referencing a TV show, or to say that there's a line that it's okay to engage culture by referencing sports. There's a lot of ungodly things happening. Driscoll spends half his sermons doing movie reviews. What? (laughs) Driscoll spends half his sermons doing movie reviews. You've never watched a lot. You're wrong, I have. I got it right here. Finish you your thought, and then we're going to go to movie your review man here. I'm talking to you. <laughs> what? Go ahead, finish. You just turned away from me like you never knew me. Depart from no, me. I, kn- I know you and love you. Continue. And there's a line for e- every one of us. None of us preaches in a cultural vacuum. Yeah. Don't you so think the line, comfortable- though, is somewhat contingent on your culture and what's going on in yes. your yes. area? Yeah, Seattle versus Charlotte. And then yeah, because I get guys Charlotte you know, versus- who are homeschooled deep in the woods, and they finally got the internet cable to go all the way out there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're listening, and they're like, we wouldn't have done that. It's like, well, yeah, no kidding. When you're churning butter, it's not an issue. <laughs> right? It's just out of control All right. right now. <laughs> wow. So, um... Um, you, you actually do have done a lot of movie reviews. No, I haven't. Av- uh, no, I haven't. Did they, you not wear a bike helmet as a kid? I already told you <laughs> I don't do a lot of movies. I don't watch a lot of movies. Yeah, but did, like, for example, when, so when did you do that Avatar movie review? Oh, I just, I ranted. I rant occasionally. <laughs> I didn't mean like Siskel and Ebert. I meant, <laughs> I meant you spent a, ha- a, a full no. 10 or 15 minutes going over Avatar and how demonic it was and blah, blah, blah. It's the most demonic thing I've ever seen, which you should watch Exorcist then. No, no. <laughs> Here's my deal with Avatar. I thought it was a great movie till the Marines started losing. I, I was cheering for the Marines. <laughs> All right. I'm always cheering for the Marines. Okay, the point is, the point is, is you're standing up in a I use it service. As an illustration. You're in a service of the Church of Jesus Christ, and you spend all this time going over this movie content. That's a cultural connection. You're yeah. known for connecting with the culture. You thought that that was something that you could uh, receive and redeem. No, no, spent... reject. I hammered it like a nail. Okay, all right, but okay, but you, you, you thought it was important enough to devote a substantive portion of a service to it. Everything you do is very intentional. I know that about you. So, um, why do I need to sit in your church and hear a, this review of this movie content? Why? Yeah, for me, I want to train my people to think, or people to think as missionaries. And I think today, sermons are preached on television, sermons are preached in music, sermons are preached in film. And there's a worldview, there's an ideology, there, there's a value system, there's a statement of God or idol in all of that communication. And so I want my people not to perceive it as entertainment. I want them to perceive it as theology. I mean, I, I, had, I put on a Hurley shirt the other day and the tag said, uh, believe in yourself. So my Hurley shirt had a doctrinal statement. Right. Right. That we, have a, that we have a problem 3. with, right? From yeah. Genesis 3. Thank you, fall. Yeah, and so, you know, for me, I want to, it's the same thing I do with my kids. We Tebow all the shows, and I'll stop and hit pause, and we're talking about it. Okay, kids, 
What's going on here? What's the story? Why every movie do we watch? Is the dad an idiot and the dog or the hamster saves the day? Why is that? Yeah. Because that's a sermon. They're saying, you know, if, if it all goes bad, find the hamster. You know? Yeah. He's yeah. got answers. Right. You know? Right. And so we're talking about this. So sometimes I'll do the same thing in the sermon. I'll talk about, okay, there's one-ism, two-ism. That was my whole sermon was there's creator creation and there's this sort of desire to collapse all of that to where pantheism, panentheism, oneism, monism. I'm teaching all this and yeah, it's a great example. All right. I, I did this first of all with, with our kids. Everybody, uh, when my kids were young, the thing, the thing that everybody hated on was The Simpsons. Filthy, awful, rotten kid, dirty attitude. And I first started uh, allowing my kids to watch it, then encouraging them to watch it, at times almost requiring them to watch it because I saw that it was a critique of things in society and I wanted my kids to learn to think and we would talk about it. I'd come home, how was it? How was The Simpsons today? And my son would say, well, we had to turn it off, Dad. You know, certain things they weren't allowed to watch and they, would, they were learning to think. So I buy the teaching your people to think thing. I understand better now why you would do that uh, in a service. But I got to say um, that I'm a little more sympathetic to the uh, position of where David Platt is at, that um, when the redeemed people of God are gathered together, the purpose is not to um, connect people with culture, to talk about what they're already deluged with. I think we lower the bar sometimes when we say, well, you know, here's my plan. I got that guy, and thank God for that guy, and I agree with you. Thank God he's going to be in heaven. But, you know, th there's a lot of wacky things in the Bible that happened that people got saved through it, mm -hmm. and I'm not necessarily saying that that, and I would say the end doesn't always justify the means because a lot of other people were impacted by that decision you made too, right. not just that guy. So you have to add up the totality of how everyone was impacted by that. And we and, do. Yeah. We do. We, we understand that when we do that, and I, I wasn't joking, we're starting out our Easter service this year with running with the devil. Yeah, and because um, bec well, it's it's a story about Barabbas, yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna really talk about. How I get it. You want to teach the story of Barabbas? Why do you want people to hear that song? What are here's you going the, here, for? See, here's the deal, and 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 Greg, I would simply say that you, I mean I agree with you. I can't stand to hear a band do a song bad, but if you want to hear a song covered well, you need to come to our church because our band will do it right, I <laughs> right. promise. Right, so the um, quality's there, that the problem quality, solved. The quality's there, and that's not a cocky statement, that's just a truthful statement. They're going to yeah. slay it. All of us um, have. Uh, it, it, so, I, you know, James, I spent years um, far from God, years, and nobody from the church Nobody, I, I, I was never invited to church when I was in school except my senior year by a guy named David that finally invited me to a Bible study because he said there were hot girls there. And there were, that's, that's the only reason I went. Um, and I wound up um, through a process uh, co coming to Christ, but I, but I realized how many of my friends, when they walk into a church, there's, there's nothing for them. There's nothing for him. And I, I get it, man. I, is God sufficient? Yes. Does God's glory? Yes. I, I'm there. I am, I am so there. I believe when we gather together. I don't think it has to be an either or. Well, you guys I worship. Think it, you I sing. Think it needs to be a both and. I mean, our worship time is very focused. It's very intentional. We focus on the glory of God. We focus on the power of God. We, I mean, we do that. I don't, I don't say, I, I'm not trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I am all about the glory of God. I was so, I was so sinful and his grace was so poured out on me and it brought me so far. I mean, I am covered under the grace okay, of God. So, so when we sing about that, I'm there, but I, G, go, Jesus was a storyteller. Jesus was engaging. Jesus didn't go, if you open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 61, you're going to see exegetically da, 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 da. He said, you know, there's a guy one time and he had some seed and everybody's going, mm-hmm. Yeah. And he threw some seed out, and yeah, I threw some seed out. Well, that happened to me too one time. Well, you know, like it or not, it's a story. That's a secular song. And um, that, so I just, you know, I'm just, James, I'm just trying to be more like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just so I, just so I can be clear about this, <laughs> you're you're saying that you agree with the doxological ultimate purpose of the church. I you have want no things idea to be done. what you just said. <laughs> You're, you're, I made a 790 on my SAT, James. I know, I know, I know. 
I think this Perry Perry does that aw shucks thing really well, doesn't no, he? No, I don't he know what a, you has, just has, said. He has a church of what? How many thousands and thousands of people? I am from Anderson, South Carolina, James. Yeah. yeah. The fact I'm not, that he I'm has not his buying the aw shucks thing. Under his pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really big deal for his town. <laughs> it's a really big deal. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's just so you say right that now. you say that you agree that everything is for God's glory, and I I got to hear you say this. So you believe that playing that song this Easter that you're going to play that that's like. And furthermore, when a person's up there on your worship team, gifted or not, and they're up there singing, I just want to try to imagine this now. They're singing, "I'm on the highway to hell." Are they singing that? Hey, under were they the control? Along? Did you have it like PowerPoint and like? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, are they singing that? Are they are show. they spirit filled? Are they singing it in the flesh? Are they actually they reveling in the fact that they're on that? Because the guys that originally did it to do it right, you got to be pretty excited about getting to hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know who knows? I I would say this about our worship leaders. I would believe they're all spirit filled, but they all have a greater goal in mind. The purpose is not let's do this song to impress people. Let's do this song to grab people's attention, to pull them into a place where we're ultimately going to get them to the Word of God, where they can hear the Word of God, and all the service works together to pull somebody's heart in where they can ultimately meet Jesus. All right, texted question, then either one of you can respond to this, because I find that you're probably pretty supportive of this too. Um, texted question, would the guy in Perry's church have come to know Christ that Sunday, even if he hadn't done the song, Highway to Hell? You know, I'm a Calvinist. Yeah. And <laughs> so yeah. What do you it's have? duck, duck, dam. You know, it's going to work itself out. I mean. Yeah. So the yeah. guy would have come to Christ with or without the song. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, I like Greg Laurie. You make an invitation, the elect respond. That's where I'm at theologically. So would the guy, yes. But the thing of it is, too, what I see, even as a reformed guy. So the this, song helped or didn't help? Well, it's, first, it's Romans 9 through 11, you know, that God's going to save all the elect. And he does it through sending messengers who are going to do a lot of work to get to those people. So God's sovereign over the ends and he's sovereign over the means. I believe in both. So would the guy have ultimately gotten saved? But he's not yes. sovereign over the means to the point where any means I choose, he is pleased no, by God it. God chose to use that service, that moment to, to regenerate insofar as we yeah, can tell God, that man. God used an ass to speak too, but I well, don't bring does. one to That's church. That's I'm up on Sunday. <laughs> right, right. You know? <laughs> I mean... So, and, and yeah, yeah, the that's, guy and that's always the go-to that people come back at me with. Well, God used a donkey. And I'm like, okay, well, then you're doing the same thing to me that you're saying I'm doing with Isaiah. Tell I me mean, about that. I, you pulled out the one talking donkey. You went the one Shrek verse, and you grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, I what's, mean tell me what your what's, what's, what's your he cannot control himself. <laughs> it's like uh, funny line, serious line, funny, funny. <laughs> Come on, finish what you finish what you were gonna say. No, that, that, that's that, that's all I was gonna say is 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 that's the one that people go to that verse and they go, well, God used the donkey, so you know, if the donkey comes on your stage and talks, no, 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 and I'm like. You know, that's the that's the only verse you got. God can use any means to redeem people. It's just we I mean, and that's the other thing, though, James, that's the other thing. We really do have a heart we, when we get together. We don't just get together and go, how can we piss a lot of people off? <laughs> I know highway to hell. That'll do it. I mean, we pray. We seek the Lord. We're asking we're begging for his direction it's not just me going i think i got a good shock effect thing this easter it's we really come together with a purpose of what do we really feel that god wants us to do in the service so if if i get it wrong if one day i stand before the lord and i have it wrong i had it wrong because i wanted to reach people for jesus okay i, I really want that but i don't believe i'm wrong okay I believe I know, you're, I know, yeah I, I know. so let me just say then that um first of all i don't think that either one of you or any of you like Stephen or whatever who would do this I, I don't think your motives are in question and I don't think we should allow people to question the motives of our brothers Okay, the Bible's pretty clear when Jesus said don't judge that's what he was talking about We have to judge actions. We're right. all called to judge actions all the time What we don't judge is the part that only God can judge which is a person's heart So I just want to say to you if I have judged your heart in that regard I want to just say I'm sorry for that. It's no, wrong, I don't but that. let me finish it's wrong to judge a person's heart in the matter but you also can't allow a person to retreat to motive as, well, hey, I meant well. We got to do better than mean well. We got to do right. Right. And what, what I struggle with, getting away from the illustrations or the examples, I struggle with the idea that the pathway for this lost person far from God to come to God is that I need to show them, I need to build a bridge that shows them that the church understands their culture, that they, that I'm going to be like the world to reach the world, uh, that I'm going to 
um, show them that, that I understand stuff that's worldly too, that sort of build the bridge to, to show them that I relate to well, that. I, I just don't, I struggle with that. Well, why don't we, why, I mean, why I mean, don't we train our missionaries to go overseas and do that very thing? Well, first we of all, we train our missionaries, go over there, study the culture, d and, and become, live among the people. The most effective missionaries live among the people. Okay, so, they so. Hold on, hold on. They learn their culture. Right. They learn their culture, and then they use that culture to bring those people in. We, they, we send them overseas, and we call it godly. We do it in America. We call it compromise. Right, I think right, there's right. a double standard. Right, so let me speak to that. I don't disagree at all. I don't disagree at all that we need to know and understand our culture. I th I've got quotes here of things that you said. Go to the mall. I study the culture. I learn the culture. I want to know what's going on. I'm a 100% on that. My struggle with, and I'm trying to advance my own understanding in this conversation, what I struggle with is now that I have studied and learned the culture, I must bring the culture to my service, and I must execute the culture in front of the people I'm trying to reach as a way of showing them that I've done my homework. That's the part I'm struggling with, not the fact that missionaries learn culture or that we understand ours, not that. It's I must enculturate the culture into my evangelistic effort. But see, you're beginning with this presumption that your church culture is pure water, and now you're bringing in no, I don't. No, I don't think that. I know that see, I've got every kind of person in my church that week, but I'm the one who's choosing the content that's going to go on the table. All right, and I mean, I could we could rattle off here for 40 minutes verses in Scripture about I will do all things to the glory of God, and and the message of highway to hell is blatantly offensive. It is demonic and affront to the glory of God and the power of the gospel. And I struggle. So see, is, I don't and, think I don't. I, I and think so is I religion. Think, I think that song can be used to the glory of God. Obviously, it was. I mean, I'll, I will stand. I disagree with that. I, I don't stand, think it was. I will stand by. I, I mean, I do because yeah, I was there. I know you, you were. I know you believe um, it. I, I will say that that's I'm not song saying you don't believe used. it. I'm just saying you're right. wrong. I, I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying you're wrong because you, you, all you saw was the video clip. You didn't. I mean, go watch the whole message and then we can have a conversation. No, no. You're because saying that your message brought glory to God. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying God wasn't up in heaven going, wow, we're going to really be able to reach some people I today. I believe he was. We're singing Highway to Hell. That's what I've been waiting for. I believe he was. Waiting for my boys to get some of the. I've been waiting for my boys to get some evil music into our service so we could finally read so, some people. So you call that music evil. So you're the judge of, of music I'm going to tell you that the song Highway to Hell is a lot of people glorying in the fact. We hear it all the time from people we reach. And it's not like we're not reaching people. In fact, there's a thousand people more every year. But I'll tell you what, they don't, they, they, here's what they say. Hey, I can't wait to get to hell, man. It's going to be a lot better than heaven. We're going to stand around and shake hands and have a beer together. And right. Highway to Hell is a message about people glorying in the fact that there's no consequence for rejecting the love of God shown in the cross. And I find it blatantly offensive to bring that content into a, into a service in the name of reaching people as though somehow performing culture is going to give God a leg up. Salvation is from the Lord. Right. The foolish... I, I completely agree with that. Now I'm going to start saying, saying a lot of things that you and I agree saying, with. You're he, here because we agree about a yeah, lot. I agree with all that. Ultimately, he used that song to bring somebody into the kingdom. I, and I, listen, listen, I, I've heard what you said about that. Ultimately, I think that song was redeemed in that moment, used for the glory of God. You would obviously never do it at your church. I did. We'll agree to disagree on that point, and, and we'll all worship together in heaven. Praise God. Yeah, for real, right? But, I totally agree but, with that. But I think that song was redeemed. I think we redeemed that song, and we were gonna, when we're going to redeem Running with the Devil on Easter this year. It's going to be awesome. You think you are. No, we are. I know yeah, we are. Yeah. Anyone else on this point? I, I think they really want you to go to the next question. <laughs> yeah, I hear all that. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, you don't care? Any, no, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I, I, we, we, I, I'd probably land more with Platt and, and Greg on this. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do. But that, the, the other thing I would say well, why about... Why not do? Why not do? Um, I, I think that Because I mean, he's really making me think. I got to say that. I mean, he's yeah. really making me think. And what I would really want to say I respect about him, he's not, so, you've got to hear this. This is not some dopey guy sitting in a corner trying to act cool. He has a strategy. It's thought through. He believes it honors God. He doesn't think he's compromising in any way. Like he is on it with a passion and a reason and defending it toe to toe. All right. I just hate this idea that somehow, like Mark said, like we're sort of, or maybe it was Stephen that said it, that we're sort of stupid over here. We're not really thinking things through as good as you guys are thinking it through. He's thought it through very carefully. You have to. You wouldn't do it. Why? Yeah, we wouldn't do it. We're, um, the, two reasons. One, one would be probably my own flesh. I, I think I would do that. If I did something like that, I'd be more trying to give a finger to that kind of fundamentalist tight, 
Yeah, you know, so backdrop, far, I'm far, in. far. Yeah, so, I get it. You'd be jamming be, people like we can do whatever my, we want. Yeah, be my, be my flesh. And and I wonder sometimes in things like this how much that's playing because we're not just products of today. We're products of yesterday. Right. Uh, and a lot of us grew up in a real tight yesterday. And when that door swings open. I mean, we, we want to run, man. We want to go. We've been in this frigging cage for two decades of, you, you know, you can't watch a rated R movie unless it is about Jesus. You can't. And on and on and on I go. And, and then the secular sacred divide. And then that door swings open for us. Totally and then if we're not careful, man, we fly into license. We fly into this place where um, all, all things are permissible and beneficial. And that's not true. And so um, I, I wonder how much of that plays into this. And it's hard, hard for me to see in my heart at times what's what. Um, but secondly, man, I, I, I've seen an overwhelming response just to the idea of the transcendence of God, the holiness of God, the weight of God. And, and I, I don't, I think it is a song that's celebrating, you know, screw you, God, we don't need you. Right. Because our, our thing's going to be better. Now, I had, there's a I guy had saved, s- praise God, but there's a guy saved, you know, because his mom was killed in a car accident. But I, I don't want to start that ministry. Right. Well, <laughs> mom killing him. Right. <laughs> now, right. We had, we had uh, the original version of the video that we showed at the beginning of this conference. Uh, the original script had the word in it. In that comment section, it had the word heretics in it. It said, you know, why would you have that heretic in here? And I don't know if they were talking about Mark or Platter. I don't know who they're Probably talking about. Probably Mark. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Here, here's what I'll tell you. I will not. I do not have ears to hear my brother called a heretic. All right? I will defend my brother's motives. I understand now better in certain instances his actions. I, will, I do not have ears to hear that, okay? That, that raises something up in me that I would not allow that to be said, not even uh, in jest or anything. And in, to me personally, I would never allow something that so defames the glory of God and the reputation of Jesus. I would not allow it in my service. Unclean. I would not allow would it. You, let me ask you this. So I mean, and, and I wouldn't do, we wouldn't, I wouldn't do this song. Right. But, um, but I know and love Perry and I can totally. as a friend. And so do you think, is this an issue where you say, well, it's contextual disagreement, you know, his conscience is at one place, his culture is at one place, mine is at another, or do you think it was a sin against God? No, I, do, I think that, um, you know, James says, if you know to do good and you don't do it, it's sin. I believe that, I hope that this conversation is going to Uh, illuminate all of us to the different actions that we choose and I'm going to share a summary about it in a moment but I don't doubt his motives and I definitely don't think it was sinful for him to do it and I agree with him that because God knows their heart because the song was only one part of a whole service um, I I think that what he did later was a lot more powerful and a lot more impactful and God was pleased to use that and God apparently wasn't so grieved by the opening thing that he sort of said I'm not going this week all right so I believe I believe that uh, he's right in saying that whatever it was, God was at work in the service. I don't doubt that at all. I guess, let's go to a different illustration lest we pound this one nail the whole time as though it's the only example well, of I, it. I just want to say, I, I do want to say this though. It's, I don't, I don't want people to think that every week we're opening up with Highway to Hell and Hell's Bells. We have done Hell's Bells too. Um, but I, I don't, and we had fire. Just don't on the, do we, Born This Way we, by Lady Gaga. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Because then even James and I are just going to. I don't, I don't, yeah, don't, even, I don't even listen to her. I, I, anyway, I, but we don't, we don't, st- we, I mean, we, when we do it, it's thought about, it's prayed through. We really do as a team seek the Lord. And we started our Christmas service this year with Oh Holy Night. Now, nobody got pissed off about that. But right. we, that's what we the started. The point is, is, is you, just, you believe that it's helpful. But what I'm saying is, is that I, 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 you know, many other examples could be given. The frankness with which you talk about sexuality in the service and, and things like that. I like um, that too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You are. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, here, here's, here's, here's my uh, thought on the subject uh, for what it's worth. And, and I'm already really instructed by this. And I, frankly, I'm not surprised, but I'm blessed by the sincerity and the uh, intentionality with which you're doing the things that you're doing. Like, I'm instructed by that. I'm going to have to think about that some more. My perspective is this. If it doesn't adorn the gospel, all right, and by adorn the gospel, I mean it's the beauty of Christ that is at stake in everything we do. The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Corinthians says, we all with unveiled faces are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are daily being changed into that image. And I don't believe that doing... uh, 
music or but I think the points uh, well taken which would include quoting videos or showing video clips or quoting movies I think that, that it's hypocrisy to say one's okay and the other isn't but I'll say and you got to wrestle with this yourself we all do every time we plan a service not just Easter obviously if it doesn't adorn the beauty of God's great son if it doesn't display him and show him off you know, Corinth, 1 Corinthians says that the powerful, most powerful evangelistic thing that happens is, is that when uninformed or unbelievers come in, they are convinced and persuaded uh, by what God is doing in the midst. They fall down and report that God is truly among you. It's the manifest presence of God in the service, which is the powerful life-changing element. And I don't believe, I believe that if it doesn't adorn the gospel, it doesn't advance the gospel. We may see fruit from, some fruit from it. W whether the fruit remains, like you said, that'll, God will have to determine that. But I believe that if it doesn't adorn the gospel, if it doesn't display the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, we may draw, we may draw people with it. We may draw decisions with it. We don't always calculate the impact that that's making on other people in the church as though the only agenda was a lost person there. And I'll just say it as simply as I know how uh, in summary. Um, um, I don't think that, I do think that if it doesn't adorn the gospel, it doesn't advance the gospel. Well, can I say, one, can, let me, the, the, I, I completely agree with you. I think the point that we're disagreeing on, I think the major point that what I'm feeling is, I think it was used to adore and, and, and be used to advance the gospel because the song was redeemed. Yeah. And Good. that's, I think that's, I think that's well, our major I'm, point. I'm going to just say then, um, I, I'm really blessed by you right now because you're, the, on this point, we've never discussed this, mm -mm. and on this point, your thinking is a lot different than I thought it was going to be. Um, you're, 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 you really thought, I think you're wrong about it, but you really have thought it through. It wasn't some random casual act. It, as you said, we prayed on this. It wasn't dismissive. And we all have things that we're blind to in our churches. We all have things that we don't see clearly. Absolutely. I don't want to sit here and tell you that I see everything clearly at my church or that you don't see things clearly at your church. I'm just going to stand on that point that I believe, and I'm glad you do agree with that. We all have to wrestle with this point. If it doesn't make Jesus more beautiful to people, it's not advancing our mission. If it's not elevating God and God's glory and God's great son, then it's not advancing the mission. And, and uh, I really struggle with this idea that to be, that in order to connect people with Christ, you have to be like them. That, that I gotta become like them to reach them is something that uh, I'm just not there yet. That's just, that's what Jesus did. Yeah. That would take another session. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Wrap it up. Let's go to Jeff. Thanks, Perry. Thanks, Mark. Thanks a lot.